I have a somewhat counterintuitive way of dealing with anxiety. I've had it plenty in my life, so I understand it sucks, but it can get better. And what happens in anxiety? And at least for me, I can only talk about what happens to me, but it seems to be pretty common with other people. So your fear response gets triggered, whatever it is, like if it's uh, social anxiety um, or whatever it might be. Um, so then the brain sends chemicals to the body. It's that um, whole fight or flight thing. So it has to get the body ready to do something to, you know, get out of there or to beat something up until it can't move anymore. And so the body reacts to these chemicals and it starts moving faster. The heart beats faster, you breathe faster. You know, you're, you're just kind of all amped up. See, I could even feel it right there. Um, <laughs> and so as the body's moving faster, what it's doing is it's telling the brain now that there is a danger. It's sort of reinforcing that that danger is present, that that danger is real. It's saying, the brain says, well, if the body's moving fast, it must be trying to get away from something. And if it's trying to get away from something, then it needs more of these chemicals so that it can have fuel to get away from the thing so we can live. And so that's what the brain does. It sends more chemicals and then the body goes faster and you end up in this feedback loop that just keeps going and going and going until, of course, something interrupts it or um, the, the situation is no longer present and you, the whole system can kind of calm down. So it's basically like panic, rinse, repeat, and it just keeps going and going and going. And that's what we feel with this anxiety. So I'll use an example of someone who has anxiety of, let's say, going into a store, going like grocery shopping or something. So what do they tend to do? They're, they know that going into this situation, they're going to, they're already anxious about the idea of going in there. So they rush into the store as fast as they can. They, you know, they, they keep their head down. They, they kind of, you know, shoulders forward, kind of like tucked away, you know, like make yourself as small and as hidden as possible, which by the way, is a victim pose. That is a, um, that is what prey does. And so throughout the store they're avoiding interaction with people um, they're, they're quickly grabbing their items and throwing them in the cart and just grabbing what they need and rushing through the store going as fast as they can they get to the the checkout lanes and they rush to the self check the one that can get them out of there the fastest way possible uh, pay for their stuff and then get the hell out of the store as quick as they can and so everything about what just happened in that situation screams I'm gonna die like you're 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 feeding into that feedback loop and you're you're spiraling down because you're you're like I my my head's down I'm running like I must be in in horrible danger and so no wonder you're anxious you're you're feeding that back to yourself continually you're saying you're basically saying I'm anxious because I'm anxious at this point there's not really anything to be afraid of so let's look into another way that that scenario could go. You could walk into the store slowly, take your time, look around at the outside of the store. You know, sometimes they have like, uh, I don't know, some displays of like uh, outdoor furniture or whatever it might be. And, you know, take a look at that as you walk in, make sure to walk through the whole store nice and slow. Keep your phone in your pocket, keep your head up because that is a, a more powerful pose that's saying I'm not afraid I'm not the prey if anything I'm the predator so chest out head up and walk through the store that way whatever stick your boobs out stick your chest out do whatever it takes nobody cares you if you're gonna be anxious you're gonna be anxious anyways who cares what people think walk through like this shoulders back and <laughs> so you try that that for the different scenario and look at everyone as you pass them don't put your head down don't shy away from them look at them maybe give them like a little smile you know it doesn't have to be anything weird or creepy it's just like a subtle smile and it tells you that they're someone you don't have to be afraid of who cares what it tells them even if they think you're a crazy person doesn't matter if they think you're a creep doesn't matter 
you're telling yourself that they, that they are nothing to be afraid of. So that's what's really important here. They may enjoy it too, but that's not the point. So again, you're gonna, as you go through the store, you're gonna take your time. You're gonna examine all of the options for things that you could buy. Get in the longest checkout lane that you can. The one that the, the people in front of you have like 300 items in their cart and you have no idea how that cart is still holding up under the weight of all of that stuff. Get behind all of them <laughs> so that you are intentionally going to be in this store for as long as possible. You're gonna extend that trip. And I know that this all sounds ridiculous, but it, it really does work. Um, so when you're in that lane, don't just stare at the magazines and the gum. Actually keep your head up. Look around the store. Look at how vast the store is. Appreciate what goes into stocking a store like that. What goes into running a store like that. This huge place that has everything that you could possibly need that all of these people have come together to make. And it just starts to feel wonderful. It starts to feel like this great place. And so as you're checking out, say something fun to the cashier. They have a boring job. They'll probably love it. They don't care if you sound stupid. They'll love just having some kind of an interesting conversation besides how's the weather out there. You know, say something funny. When they say, how you doing? Tell them how, you do how you're doing. You can even say, I'm working on my anxiety right now. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm doing my best to try and say something funny to the cashier. And they will probably think that's the funniest thing they've heard all day. <laughs> and so enjoy it. Then as you walk out of the store, walk out nice and slow, nice and calm and relaxed. You have plenty of time to get out of the store. There's nothing in there trying to eat you, probably. <laughs> so what you're doing here in this second scenario is you're interrupting that feedback loop. You're, you're telling your lizard brain that it's wrong, that it can just shut up and go take a nap or something because there's no danger. How do we know there's no danger? Because I'm walking slow and I have my head up and I'm smiling. In fact, this could even be pleasurable that the fact that I'm walking like this and I'm smiling and I'm having a good time, it tells the brain that we don't need those fear chemicals anymore. The chemicals that we want are the good ones, the ones that make us happy, the ones that make us calm. Those are the chemicals that we want. And we do that through the body. So by intentionally slowing our body down and intentionally standing up straight, we're saying, relax, it's all good, we got this. And the same principle can be applied to really anything that you're anxious about. Um, it can be something that's, a, you know, maybe a conversation um, that, you're, that you need to have or, or maybe you're just generally anxious about conversations. So slow down in the conversation, relax, take a moment, appreciate the person that you're looking at. And I know some people will say, imagine people in their underwear, but that just seems kind of weird to me. So <laughs> appreciate them. Appreciate what went into them becoming who they are. Take that moment. Speak slowly. When you catch yourself speaking quickly, relax, pull it back, speak slowly. And I had to do this with exactly what I'm doing right now. I was absolutely terrified every time I would look at a camera when I started doing these videos. There was an anxiety there. It was like, this thing just, it just stares at me and it never blinks and like, oh my God, this is terrifying. <laughs> and so I would try to get away from it. That was my reaction is like, well, the faster I talk, the faster I move, the, I can get away from this thing and I can go do something else. And I had to, I had to really teach myself through this same method of slowing down that I could control my speech and controlling my speech told my brain that it was okay forcing myself to move slower, to be a little bit more relaxed. That again, sent another signal to my brain that everything's okay. We can just chill. We can just look at the camera. We can be ourselves. We can have fun and smile. And I say we, because I'm talking about me and my brain. That's a whole nother video. We'll get to that. <laughs> so 
you can do this with almost anything. And it really does come down to breaking that feedback loop. That's what you want to do. You want to end that feedback loop as soon as you notice it. And you're going to notice it at different times in different situations. Sometimes you'll notice it right away. Sometimes it'll take you a while. You know, 10 minutes later, you'll be like, oh my God, have I been acting like this the whole time? But it doesn't matter. Don't punish yourself for it. These are old, well-trained habits that you have. So just when you notice it, just say, okay, I need to slow down and do exactly that. Just slow down and just relax for a second. And that feedback loop will start and it'll start spiraling you back up instead of bringing you back down into that anxiety. So smile, always smile, <laughs> smile and slow down and see if that doesn't help out your anxiety, whatever the situation might be. And I would love to hear from you as to how that works or what other tricks you use. And of course, be sure to hit like and share the video. Have a great day.